Hello and welcome back to Solo Board Gaming Presents. Today it's 2GM Pacific from Draco Ideas, um, their latest iteration in the 2GM series, the first of which was 2GM Tactics, uh, mainly focusing on the Western Front in World War II. This is a deck building card game uh, that happens to be based in World War II using World War II units, uh, weapons and tactics. And right from the off, I do have to say, I've had this game just about, just over a week now, uh, seven or eight days, and I wanted to get this part of it to the table uh, in the first couple of days. The reason I didn't is because I kept on playing the game. So right from the off, uh, I'm going to be uh, absolutely upfront and uh, admit that I'm gushing about this game. Because it, so if you don't want any gushing, please don't uh, continue watching. <laughs> um, but I have to say, every single turn I've played of this game has been an absolute joy, and it's brought a smile to my face on every single turn. Um, Great box art, uh, very reminiscent of the war comics of the 60s and 70s, uh, that kind of thing. Um, in the military, we used to call those war comics training manuals uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and a great example uh, there on the front of the box with a beach landing, the Americans coming up the beach, uh, being opposed by the Japanese forces here. Uh, a battle going on in the sky here between probably Zeros or maybe Franks and P-38. Um, uh, fantastic box art and reminiscent uh, of those childhood uh, war comics. So if we just move this away for a second. And this is uh, the rest of what we have in the box, what you can expect in the box. Um, I have a counter tray here uh, full of counters which I've punched. These are all the uh, uh, weapons upgrades, skills upgrades, tools upgrades, uh, the wound counters, the action point counters. Um, these are how you will buff your cards uh, if possible throughout the game providing you've got the required number of action points and then just look at the cards. Look at the sheer amount of cards you have. As I say, it's a deck building game where if you're not playing historical scenarios, uh, in, in, instead you can play pitched battles where you will agree on a, uh, a set of points for each army. So let's say 120 points. And from that, uh, by checking the card values, you will build your uh, uh, play decks uh, for the Japanese, uh, for the US forces, and so on. But look at the sheer amount of cards here. Uh, this is the Japanese units deck. These are just units. So these are, are infantry, artillery, transport, uh, air units, tanks. Uh, and the same here for, for the United States. These are all just units. Um, so just look at the depth of that stack. Then in front, uh, we have this uh, further Japanese deck here, and these are all the support cards. So these are the cards which, again, will buff your units uh, on the board uh, uh, or, or, or provide events or, or weapons and tactics to use throughout the game. And the same here for the US. On the top, we have uh, sets of um, uh, generals for each of the... Uh, opposing uh, armies. A couple of D10s there. Uh, over here uh, we have uh, terrain cards. Stacks of terrain cards, plenty of them look. Uh, you have a stack of natural terrain, lakes, rivers, bushes, that kind of thing, and stacks of artificial terrain which tend to be buildings, trenches uh, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, well not finally, there's still a bit to go yet, I'm sorry about that. We have the headquarters boards here, uh, headquarters for the US, headquarters for the um, 
uh, Japanese and the headquarters will provide uh, action points at the start of each turn and in pitch battles uh, you will be trying to uh, reduce the points, uh, reduce the hit points of the opposing headquarters and destroy the opposing headquarters for a win. Uh, during historical scenarios uh, that sometimes um, uh, uh, one of the targets but very often there are, are historical objectives on the board uh, instead or uh, as well. The last of the cards and this is where this iteration of the game 2GM Pacific has really hit it as the ballpark. These are cards here each one is an advanced rule uh, that uh, opponents can agree on beforehand and rather than having to look up the uh, uh, advanced rule you could you could have a card for each advanced rule that you've agreed upon actually visible on the board to remind you um, uh, that is, is is quality and detail right there um, also you'll notice that in 2gm Pacific, Another vast improvement is this huge game board. Uh, it's a really heavy, uh, 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 solid game board uh, with some generic type uh, playing surface there uh, upon which where you, you will put uh, natural and artificial terrain and then advance your troops towards their objectives or defend the objectives and so on and even round the edge uh, they put suggested spaces where you might keep your um, uh, tokens, your turn sequence cards, your support cards and, and that kind of thing, if that's what you want to do and if you have enough room to do that. But most of us I know uh, will have uh, favourite places to keep those sorts of support items, uh, very often dictated by the amount of space we have. But this is a huge board. Uh, with much bigger spaces for the cards. There's now spaces with the cards here where uh, you can uh, lay one card on top of another and still see uh, the card underneath. Uh, now, documentation, absolutely 100% brilliant. First of all, you have the rule book, which is a full color rule book like so, perfectly set out, and I must say, very easily understood. It's, uh, uh, it has a logical uh, set out and format, uh, very easily understood, explains the cards, uh, examples of tactics, there's terrain there, uh, uh, examples of how to set out some of the cards, and so on. So those are the basic rules. Um, and there we have examples of the shooting phase, uh, etc. And this, the entire rule set, uh, after going through, there we go, is 18, 19 pages long. Um, and that's it. And look at that print. It's really big, well-spaced well print with lots of uh, coloured pictures. So you can start playing this game really, really, very, very quickly. And those advanced rules I spoke about here, You'll find those in the advanced rule book. Uh, this rule book is a bit thicker. They are all optional rules, uh, telling you about each of the advanced rules uh, which you can play or not play, and that is entirely up to yourselves, uh, up to you and your opponent. Um, well, I found that by adding one or two, I mean literally just one or two advanced rules, you start taking this game from uh, a normal deck building uh, slog fest, take that, take that, take that, and so on, uh, and, start, and you can start back making it a little bit more of a war game. But I must say, whether you do that or not, whether you play the basic game or add in advanced rules, uh, it, it has tons of strategy, tons of tactics, um, and as I said, right from the off, an absolute joy to play. We then have uh, the 2GM Pacific Campaign Book. Wow. 
Um, this knocks it out the ballpark for me. Uh, this is the entire Pacific War, basically, uh, as regards uh, the USA and Japan. And there are uh, several campaigns in here of, there we go, the Pearl Harbor campaign, which includes Philippines, Wake Island, Manila, and so on, uh, Guadalcanal, uh, various scenarios in that campaign, uh, Solomon Islands and Gilbert Islands, three scenarios there. The Marshall Islands, the Mariana Islands, and the Philippines again. Uh, and then the uh, Volcano Islands, and so on, including Iwo Jima. I think there's 20 campaigns there, 19 or 20 campaigns, something like that. Uh, each one has a campaign set up. Uh, shows you more or less how to set up the map. Has a little bit of history. And these campaigns, uh, where they can still include uh, destroy the opponent headquarters, uh, very often most of the campaigns have specific objectives uh, on the board. Wow, that's one reason why I couldn't stop playing. So I've played a couple of times now the first two scenarios here. Love it. And then finally, as far as documentation is concerned, you have the solo mode summary like so. Now I thought I could learn the solo mode just from this um, uh, summary. I couldn't. <laughs> I had to go uh, into the uh, advanced rule book and that's where you'll find the solo mode in great great detail. Uh, I didn't find that particularly easy to follow but by the time I did um, uh, and then played an example on the board I had it down, it became logical, it became smooth. Uh, and at first I thought, my goodness me, that's a lot of solo AI uh, to uh, manage. Not at all. There's a small bit of management, of course there is, uh, but basically the AI will be uh, behaving uh, like a human opponent uh, and giving you a heck of a challenge. These new solo rules, um, are brilliant and, 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 and very, very workable, very, very playable and have made the game for me. Can't wait now um, until uh, I can play this game uh, with a human opponent, uh, which is hopefully sometime next week. Anyway, next thing, because we don't be too long on this, let's get closer down and take a look at what's in these stacks of cards. Okay, so we're a little further in now. Let's take a look at some of the terrain cards first of all. Uh, let's start with the artificial terrain. So I have the deck in my hand here. I'm just going to sort through some of them. Uh, a lake. Beautiful artwork. Just look at that artwork. Absolutely top notch. Uh, striking, popping colour. Uh, rivers. Like so. Again, popping colour uh, and very obviously um, a river. Some detail, in, inaccessible and it's indestructible. In other words, you can't destroy that particular terrain. Inaccessible and indestructible, that lake there. Unless you have a card that can do it. Amphibious vehicles, build a bridge, that kind of thing. Oh, yes, it's all in here. Um, Real, no, we don't want that again, another river. Uh, bushes, uh, providing medium cover, uh, because the opponent, if firing into it, will have to add plus one to their die roll to hit. Medium cover, difficult terrain, jungle. What else do I have? Just sorting through the cards here. Oh, of course, uh, we're playing an island. You might have a beach landing. So there's the sea. Inaccessible, unless you have the right amphibious craft, etc. Indestructible. There's plenty of those. Uh, mountain. We are talking about uh, islands in the Pacific after all. Uh, many of them volcanic. And again, difficult terrain. Indestructible. 
forest. Is there any more different uh, natural terrain? There's plenty of examples to choose from here. Uh, before we go on to something else, uh, just notice this. Every single one is double-sided. Ho, 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 wow, look at that. Beautiful set of cards. So this is your natural terrain, and a certain amount of natural terrain, uh, according to how many points you have at the beginning, or how the uh, uh, scenario, the historical scenario, is to be set up. A certain amount of natural terrain uh, will be set out on the battle board at the start of the game. So that's the natural terrain. There we go. Like so. Now let's look at some artificial terrain. What do you mean by artificial terrain? Well, some of them can be scenario objectives. For instance, this bridge. Brilliant. Uh, radio tower. I've just played Wake Island where uh, radio tower was one of the objectives for the Japanese. Look at that colour. Trenches. And aren't those trenches? Brilliant. Medium cover again. Uh, it has this evasion keyword on, which means that when shooting into it, the enemy has to add plus one to their die rolls for hits and that kind of thing. Buildings. So we can have a major village or small town. A cabin. Foxhole. And on the back, because these are double-sided, hideout. Superb. Foxhole. Foxhole. I'm just sorting through these um, uh, cards. Uh, and of course, barbed wire. Tunnels. Back to tunnels. So this is all artificial terrain. Uh, again, that can be laid according to scenario or how many points you have um, uh, prior to the game. Bunkers. All these are double-sided. Look, if I turn over this bunker, ruins. So it's become rubble. It provides full cover plus three. Um to any dice roll to try and hit what's inside. Once it's turned over, it just becomes difficult terrain. It's rubble. So tons and tons of thought um, have gone into these cards. So that's the terrain. Um, so there'll be a certain amount, I don't know, there could be four of these cards on the board uh, before you start the game, there could be six, eight, ten, uh, depending on the uh, scenario being played. So let's move these out of the way. And let's look at some uni cards. So now let's take a look at some of the uni cards. Uh, we can't possibly go through all of the uni cards. Uh, but we'll take a look at some of the Japanese forces first. First of all, the infantry, light infantry, uh, nice cheap cards, only cost one to deploy, uh, and so on. Again, great art there. Uh, it is very much comic book like. Um, it shows the additional equipment they can be upgraded with when you first deploy them. If you've got the action points, these can carry grenades, uh, or they can be. Uh, a medic uh, unit, they can carry first aid. Defensively, uh, upgrade wise, hit the dirt. Uh, again, for another one uh, action point, but these can be added as the card is played. Now we've got the heavy infantry, uh, and you can see these guys here, here uh, carrying a heavy machine gun uh, and a mortar. Uh, and so on, because again, these can be upgraded with anti-tank rifle, HMG, mortar, and that kind of thing. 
Uh, and now some of the Special Forces cards. There you go. Japanese Special Forces. Uh, cheap to um, uh, deploy, relatively anyway. Uh, two action points. Uh, this one's two action points. This one's one action point. I pointed at the wrong thing earlier on, didn't I? Because these on the right hand side is the uh, amount of squares it can move. One, one, one. And again, it can be given upgrades. Uh, the special forces here, mechanic, flamethrower, sappers, sniper, and that kind of thing. What else do we have? The special naval landing forces. Uh, again, quite an expensive card, this one. Uh, it's now cost three to deploy. Love these. Uh, I use these quite well in the second game that I played, Mounted Infantry. Um, it doesn't look like a lot, but the fact that these guys can move two and all the other infantry can only move one um, can move them quite rapidly up the board. Expensive to deploy, three action points. The Radio Operator. Um, you need to take care of this guy uh, because once he's deployed, he's going to grant you an extra action point uh, each and every turn. Uh, communications wise that's absolutely brilliant so that's just a very quick look at the infantry let's take these guys away da, da, da. let's have a look at some of the Japanese armor there's some great armor here and again uh, look at that art this wading tank here the Titan type 97 uh, these guys can move uh, two squares um, and so on a Type 97. Look at this tiny little uh, whippet like mini tank, the Type 94. Not known for their brilliant tanks, the Japanese. Um, type 3. Oh, now this boy's expensive. Costs five uh, action points to deploy, but not available until 1944. Uh, that one at least carried a decent heavy gun. The Type 97, the Chiha with its uh, uh, radio uh, mass around the turret. The Type 95 Hargo. The Type 2 Amphibious Armoured Vehicle. Look at this great art. You can imagine it in your comics and Captain Hurricane jumping on the top and throwing a grenade in the turret and that kind of thing. Um, and the Type 1 uh, self-propelled gun there, look. Great stuff. Uh, what should we look at next? Let's take a little look at some artillery. Uh, there's a little pea shooter, the Type 94, 37mm, the Type 1, 47mm. Um, they start to get better now. The Type 92, 70 millimeter. The Type 96, 150 millimeter. All this range of artillery of varying costs to deploy look. Uh, for instance, this one will only be two. Uh, whereas if you want this baby, it's five points to deploy it. This one's three. Uh, and of course, anti-aircraft guns, 25 millimeter. Uh, twin anti-aircraft guns there. Uh, what should we look at next? Let's look at um, a little bit of transport. Uh, you got the simple uh, uh, lorry, the Type 94. Uh, these can transport units because it can move three. Uh, amphibious vehicle, the Toyota Suki. Not available until 1943. And the same with this one the Type 1 personnel carrier, um, like so. Good for towing artillery and that kind of thing. And finally, one of the most exciting parts for me is my love of aircraft. Let's have a look at the aircraft cards, the ubiquitous A6M, the Zero. Light, long range, Zero means zero armour, 
No, it doesn't, but there you go. Uh, incredibly manoeuvrable aircraft. The Aichi Val dive bomber. The Nakajima Ki-43. Oh, look at that art. And now a couple of bombers. The Betty, the Mitsubishi uh, G4M, and the Mitsubishi Ki-67. Uh, when's that one available? Oh, it's from 43, from 1943. Beautiful, beautiful uh, card art. Um, as well as uh, being used to ground attack um, on their own merit, uh, these cards can also be used to escort uh, the bombers uh, onto the target. So those are some of the uh, Japanese cards. Uh, they also have generals. These are double-sided. See? General Saito. And who's on the other side? General Ushijima. I apologise profusely, by the way. Uh, Yamashita. Sakai. Some of the generals. So there's eight there, because they're double-sided. Generals. Um, to choose from uh, support cards there's too many really to mention I love this one I love the art on it lost play this card on an enemy unit as soon as it's deployed and it means that that unit does not in fact deploy this turn uh, what a shame uh, the action points have already been spent by your opponent um, but the card uh, can uh, come back on the next turn. Reinforcements. What else do we have? Sick patients. I used this one uh, in my last game. Or rather, the AI used it. The AI used this card uh, on me. Uh, remove an enemy unit from the battlefield. Played the card uh, on one of my units to remove it from the battlefield. Uh, that broke my line of communication and destroyed my action points for the following turn. What a card. Uh, duplicate. So you can see how these cards are played as instants uh, or, or upgrades. Uh, fortunate. Where you can add or subtract one from the result of a die roll because of your lucky helmet there. Shrapnel. So you get an idea how the, oh, look at this one. You missed how these uh, support cards are played. Anti-tank mine. I just want to try and find the ambush card. One of my personal favorites. There's one here called ambush. Oh, there it is. I thought I couldn't find it. Ambush. Love the art on that. Deploy a unit from your hand into any space or terrain card on the board that's free of enemy units. Can't go through them all. There are tons of them. Okay. I think very quickly we'll just go through a couple of the US cards so you can have a very quick look at the art. Um, and then we'll call it a day for this particular video. So here come the American forces very quickly. Uh, same br brilliant art. Uh, we'll start with the light infantry, uh, like so. Superb heavy infantry. Very heroic look. Uh, like this one, man uh, mechanized infantry. Brilliant, and now here come the boys. Here come the Marines. Uh, a lot of different Marines units uh, here, because we're talking about the Pacific War, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we got Recon Marines. Excellent. Uh, so these are lighter troops uh, than these Marines here. Cheap to deploy, so... Uh, could be a good card to get out pretty early. 
can carry grenades or a sniper um, uh, upgrade, medic kit and so on. Marine Raiders. These guys are now fairly expensive, costing three points to deploy, but they can carry a flamethrower, snipers, mechanic. They can also carry a hit the dirt upgrade. They can be embarked. They can repair. They are sappers, so they can repair and destroy. The ubiquitous radio operator, one of my favourite cards. I do like this card. I don't know why. Um, uh, it's going to be the colours, I suppose. Uh, brilliant card, uh, because again, once that's on the board and it's cheap to deploy, um, that will generate an action point each turn. So we need to look after that one. Any more? Yes. Uh, there's another type of card, Special Forces. Uh, again, look at the skills that can be upgraded. Mechanic, Sappers, Sniper, Flamethrower, um, and so on. Great set of um, infantry cards. And there's tons of these in the US deck. So, that's those. Let's have a look at some of the US tanks. The M2 light tank, just coming out of the bush there, look. Fantastic. Slow, uh, can only move one square, uh, but it's only three to deploy. We're getting better now, the M3. Ubiquitous M4, the A2 version, uh, which is basically the uh, main version that um, went through most of the war. Introduced here, it says 1942. Brilliantly, from 1944 onwards, we look at that. Straight out of your war comic book. Uh, the M4 Sherman A3. Um, so that's the upgunned uh, version, and that's reflected on the uh, armour piercing value um, uh, and the lower critical hit value here on the card. Uh, only in the last year of the war, the uh, M26, the Pershing, but it's there. Uh, there's the Priest, the self-propelled gun. What's the range on that one? Four. Uh, amphibious uh, armour, the Buffalo and the LVT A4 like so great, great art I keep saying that I'll have to try and stop it uh, let's have a look at a couple of the guns the M1 howitzer this baby uh I played the Japanese forces uh, attacking uh, Wake Island in the first scenario. The AI were the American defenders. Uh, this opened up um, and destroyed one of my heavy infantry units as soon as it hit the beach. <laughs> uh, the M3 howitzer. Nice anti-aircraft gun. The M1 37mm. So he's scanning the skies for aircraft activity and the ubiquitous the M1 the long Tom. there's some terrific artillery to choose from there uh, when building your deck a bit of transport uh, the M6 Fargo armed obviously the M3 scout car love that picture the M16 half track there and it can be upgraded uh, to carry mortars. And the amphibious alligator. And again, back to my favorite bit, the US aircraft, the P-40 Warhawk. Look at that, in the rain. The shark's teeth insignia there that we often see from World War II. 
that one can be played all the way through from 1940. Uh, from 41, the P38 Lightning. All that powerful armament in the nose on that big twin boom fighter. The flying milk bottle, the P47 Thunderbolt. And from 1944, and thank goodness guys, there's only two of these in the whole uh, huge American deck, but it's there uh, costing 10 points uh, to deploy the B-29 Super Fortress. For instance, that one will bomb a rectangular area of two by four spaces. Two by four spaces. That's a heck of <laughs> So, um, I wouldn't like to uh, see that one coming particularly. Superb. Um, so that's a quick look at the uh, American forces. We won't go through the American support cards. Again, there's just too many of them. They're very much like the uh, Japanese ones anyway. So I'll just cover a couple more things. I mentioned in the advanced rules book, there are um, uh, some advanced rules and decide with your opponent which advanced rules, if any, you want to play during that particular game, and then just place the card uh, to the side of the, t the um, uh, table. One of the advanced rules that I do play, um, because I enjoy it, adds a little bit more spice, is the additional shielding defense role. So rather than an automatic hit, the uh, target gets a chance to uh, roll on his defense shield uh, to see if he can save himself from that hit. Or there's a su su successful hit table. Advanced rule for self-propelled artillery, tactical artillery attack, upgrade token drop. So when a unit gets destroyed and it's got upgrade tokens on it, does it drop them on the field, the upgrades, for instance, their HMG or not? Advanced rule for starting deployment, large field, lend lease, field marshal, smoke canisters. So some great choices there where you can spice up the game and make it um, uh, slightly more tactical um, and maybe more difficult. Each side also, uh, here's the US ones, here's the Japanese ones, uh, gets two cards each. Uh, one side of the card, of one of the cards, explains the potential upgrades, upgrades for the Japanese or for the US, because uh, the opposing forces, and again, this is great detail for a card game, um, uh, some of the upgrades can behave slightly differently. They've even put slightly different uh, icons. Look, this is the Japanese grenade, a bit like a smoke grenade type, like a can, uh, like so. And this is the more uh, pineapple shaped uh, US grenade here. Um, it's got bazooka or it's got anti-tank rifle here for the Japanese. So slightly different and slightly different capabilities. What have we got on the, the oh, there you go. We've, we've got a turn sequence. Uh, look at the stages in a turn. So when one person takes a turn, one side takes a turn, for instance, the Japanese here, there's the start phase, HQ, cards, movement, deployment, shooting, flip over, that's the upgrade tokens, discard and end of turn. Same for the Americans. And now we've got special abilities charts to remind us of what some of the keywords means, uh, one for each player. Great. Great detail. So that's it. We really need to wrap up now. That is um, uh, 2GM Tactics. Wrong. 2GM Pacific uh, from uh, Draco Ideas. A game full of joy, full of smiles, full of tactics, full of strategy. Um, great fun. In the next video, uh, I'm going to do a, a playthrough demo of the new solo rules. Don't miss it, they're great rules and easy to apply.
Thanks ever so much. See you then.